Hello everyone, it's Ryan back again to bring you another video. Ryan from Drop Off Aquatics. Uh, today's video is going to be a quick one on uh, the freshwater side today. Uh, it's going to be regarding specifically botanicals. So what are botanicals? Botanicals are uh, leaves, seeds and pods. Uh, Katapi leaves or Indian almond leaves, you may have heard of those before. Well there's actually loads of different botanicals that you can place into your aquarium. Uh, which is really, really fantastic for a few different reasons. Uh, one of the main reasons why a lot of uh, shops and a lot of fish keepers use botanicals, uh, specifically for shrimp tanks, uh, they will actually, when you put botanicals into your aquarium, over time, they will, over a matter of a few days we're talking here, uh, they will start to produce bacteria and you'll get like a film of bacteria and uh, there's a word that I'm trying to think of right now that I cannot remember which is always typical and uh, yeah it's just a natural natural film that builds up on, on, on all of the seeds, pods and leaves and that actually prov provides a free uh, food for the shrimp. Now of course we still feed the shrimps on sp specific foods uh, like pellet foods uh, to make sure that they're getting plenty of uh, nutritional value but it's just shrimps are opportunistic feeders so they will constantly throughout the day that if you have shrimps you know exactly what I'm saying here shrimps will constantly constantly search for food and uh, so the, what I'm trying to say here is the botanicals are fantastic because they provide natural food source constantly throughout the day if you have a leaf an Indian almond leaf that's in your shrimp tank it'll take maybe a couple of days to start building up uh, natural bacteria uh, that, the, that the shrimps can eat. But once it does so, the shrimps will literally gradually graze on that bacteria and that, uh, that, that kind of uh, film, natural layer of film, for anywhere up to two or three weeks, depending on how many shrimps you've got. And of course, it's great because those leaves are not really gonna rot down, they're not gonna spike ammonia, they're not gonna spike nitrites. They're not, it's not like you're shoving in a handful of flake food or a handful of pellets you know, you've got to be so careful with shrimp tanks not to overfeed them because it is so easy to do so. And of course, you know, with shrimps, you, if you overfeed them, ammonia spikes, nitrite spikes, nitrate spikes even, you know, with, with shrimps. It's one of those, everyone will say different things. This is just our opinion. But really, you cannot keep shrimps with high nitrates. Now, of course, there is exceptions to every rule and uh, every case. And there'll probably be people that say, oh, I keep shrimps in, you know, 80 parts per million nitrates or 40 parts per million nitrates. Uh, and that might be the case. You know, people probably can keep them, no problem. Uh, but we tend to find it's more captive bred shrimps that are used to uh, or have adapted to those higher nitrates. Uh, a lot of our shrimps are imported directly uh, from all around the world. And so, of course, you've got to remember that these shrimps, the adult shrimps specifically, have been kept in... Uh, one particular water all their lives and then we they get shipped out to us and of course we've just got to make sure that the water quality is spot on for them so we always recommend keeping the nitrates nice and low for freshwater shrimps and so yeah you have to be really careful with how much you feed because it is so easy to overfeed freshwater shrimps so the great thing about botanicals is that you can throw in seeds pods leaves and it provides natural food and you don't really have to worry about polluting the water at all because it's not going to rot down. It's not really going to have much effect on the water quality at all. Now, going to water quality, it can affect the, the pH. As you put seeds and leaves and pods in, uh, they will release tannins into the water. Tannins are like a, a yellowy brown substance, uh, completely natural, completely normal. Don't worry about if, they, uh, if you put them in, and then the next day suddenly your water has turned like a yellowy brown darker colour. That is just the tannins that are released out from the leaves and the seeds and the pods. Uh, tannins will, because it is a, 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 a acidic, um, it will naturally try to lower your pH and make it slightly more acidic. Um, so just be wary of that. What all we do is we just grab a jug of RO water, uh, boiling RO water. And we just place all the seeds and the pods and the leaves into uh, the boiling RO water for about five minutes, 10 minutes, let the water cool down. Uh, that not only does that just make sure that 
the uh, the le there's no dust particles on there. Uh, there's nothing on there at all. Um, it also just means that the leaves will sink down to the bottom really quickly. Uh, you can see I've actually got some Indian almond leaves here or katapa leaves. Same same thing, just a couple of different uh, common names, if it were. And if I I'll probably pop these in into one of the shrimp tanks uh, in a few days time and if I do so I'll always make sure I boil them just because it sinks straight away if I was to place these in now dry they'd float on the surface it takes probably about two or three days before the, the leaf becomes saturated with water and then it will sink down to the substrate which is no problem you, you can do that absolutely fine but it's just with shrimps being quite sensitive we think really Every single time we do seeds, leaves and pods, boil them in our row water. You know, it's just an, a safety precaution that it's worth doing really. Uh, so yeah, I think that's about everything. I think I've covered that topic. So yeah, we have seeds, leaves and pods in stock right now. Uh, if you if you have shrimps, if you keep shrimps and you've never had any seeds, leaves, seeds, leaves or pods in your shrimp tank, and you're interested just drop us a private message get in touch and uh, if you're in the local area or if you're in the UK for that matter we can post out no problem to you and uh, yeah I think that's pretty much pretty much that topic covered for today I'll try and keep this video short and sweet uh, I might show you some footage of some leaves that I put in a couple of days ago uh, uh, yeah I will I'll pop that in right now so you probably can't see too well because oh there you go is a this is the yellow colony here you can see a few yellow shrimps in there and these are breeding you can see little shrimplets on the sublosa tank there well the reason for this uh, quick clip is to show you the katapa leaves so all we do with these these are like 30 30 liter sections and you can see that we've got five here. This is one of the Neo Caradina racks, uh, well, Caradina tank, should I say, sorry. So we've got blue velvets in the far uh, tank, far section. And then we've got yellows, high grade yellows. Well, they're all high grade to be fair. Um, yellows, fire reds, fire reds and fire reds. We've got three tanks of fire reds because we sell so many. Uh, they're so so popular but yeah you can see in every single section on the bottom now there are bits of katapa leaves and these are just great especially for the aquariums with shrimplets in which a lot of them now do have if you see see all the shrimplets there on the bottom you can see they've all congregated around this this couple of uh, pieces of katapi leaf or Indian almond leaf. Here you go, there's an adult shrimp on them now. So these leaves have been in for a couple of days, so they're starting to build up that natural bacteria now. And literally, these shrimplets and the adult shrimps, all size, doesn't matter what size shrimp you've got, whether it's the tiniest shrimplets or the largest adult shrimps, they will all use this as a natural food source, which is great. And then all we do is just leave these, leave the leaves in. We don't remove them at all. The shrimps will pretty much strip them right down to the, the, the veins. And then they just disintegrate. And as soon as we notice that the leaves are starting to go patchy and that the shrimps are plowing through it, we just simply boil some more leaves up, rip them up, and get them in there. So it's just a constant. I'd probably say at the moment we're doing this every fortnight. And you can see this is a uh, this is a the size of a leaf. We literally rip them up, break them up again, and we'll probably pop two or three of these in a 30 or 40 litre aquarium and we try 
if we can, scatter them around the aquarium because of course if you've got shrimplets, shrimplets are going to be everywhere and you want to make sure that those shrimplets can get some sort of source of food. Now we do feed, as I say before in the earlier on in the video, we do feed pellets daily to our shrimps and uh, there's a couple of different pellets that we do as well but we also crush the pellets up into like a really fine powder so the powder then the food gets everywhere in the aquarium and the shrimps get plenty of food however by doing so you've got to be extremely careful with how much food you're adding in now the great thing is with our shrimp tanks we've got really nice big Hamburg mat and sponge filters And then we also grow some kind of moss in every single section. Of course, the moss will naturally help to absorb nitrates and also ammonia, of course. But then we've also got some pothos plants, which are absolutely superb at, again, absorbing any ammonia, nitrates out of the, uh, out of the water. You can see that one's really starting to take off now. So you might be wondering, how do you actually prepare your botanicals? Well, it can be easier to be honest. It's literally just boiling water, boiling RO water. We use uh, preferably RO water, uh, but I suppose to be honest, if you boiled tap water, any chlorine and whatnot should go out of it. Yes, okay, there would be heavy metals in there, uh, but ideally if you're keeping shrimps and you're keeping them in RO water, then really ideally uh, we'd recommend bo using boiled RO water. So I'm going to show you, it's real quick uh, to do, literally we're just going to get the almond leaves that you saw me literally just start to break up and we're just going to break them up really quickly into no particular size pieces, all in there just like so, putting them in our own water that I prepared earlier just so we don't have to wait around for, for the kettle to boil. Voila, that's it. Now you'll see that this water will start to go quite yellow. That'll just be the tannins naturally coming out of the leaves. That's completely normal, as I say, mentioned in the earlier on in the video. Uh, the seeds, the leaves, and pods do contain natural tannins, uh, so that will just come out of them. Uh, so all we do is we leave this jug now uh, until well about five ten minutes uh, or, or if we get busy with customers or it maintenance in the shop we literally just leave it and we'll come back to it in half an hour or what next time we remember the water will be chilled and so we can just literally grab the katapa leaves out and then throw them into the aquariums with the shrimps and the shrimplets then so i'll let this cool down and then we'll throw them into uh, some various tanks so it's been about half an hour since we actually put the katapa leaves or Indian almond leaves into boiling water. Uh, the water is now completely cooled off and you can actually see that the water has completely changed colour. It's gone a, a lot more yellow uh, or darker brown, wherever you see it. And uh, yeah, so this is just the tines that's come out as we've discussed previously. Uh, the leaves now, rather than floating around for a couple of days, you can see there's still a couple that are buoyant in there. But rather than floating around for two to three days before they become saturated, boiling them become, makes them become sat saturated with water a lot quicker and allows them to sink, uh, which is ultimately much better for our shrimps because biofilm and bacteria. Biofilm is the word that I was looking for earlier on, by the way. Biofilm and bacteria, uh, all the natural good stuff, will begin to grow on the leaves much quicker uh, than they would, obviously, floating around the top of the aquarium. So without further ado, we'll get these leaves into a couple of tanks now and we'll wrap up this video. And there we have it, you can see the small bits of katapa leaves that we've broken up have sank down to the substrate and will basically provide food for these little chaps. Which are blue velvet A-grade shrimp hooks.
So I think we'll wrap the video up there. Thanks everyone for watching. Remember to subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. And we will see you on the next video.